Try to imagine a camera that is uh, performing surveillance on a car park and parts of this car park is uh, strongly illuminated by strong strong light, sunlight and another part of the car park is in shadow and is very dark and this camera in the same exposure needs to efficiently capture uh, image information in both the light parts as well as also in the dark shadow parts it creates problems to find the right exposure time and it, it uh, puts requirements on the camera to be able to handle that kind of very large uh, range of dynamics in, in the picture. In a similar way, let's say that you are driving a modern car right into the sunset where the sun is very low and the camera of your car needs to be able to detect and read uh, road signs in direct sunlight right in front of you as well as also seeing details on the lane markings on the roads as well as also be able to detect pedestrians on the roadside that is not that strongly illuminated. So I think you can understand that <clears throat> there is a big issue about the camera being able to uh, efficiently capture image information both in the dark parts as well as also in the light parts. So that's why we define the uh, dynamic range of a camera as the ratio between the lowest intensity and uh, the highest intensity. And we are using a logarithmic scale multiplied with uh, the factor of 20, which means that we are aiming for a, a decibel scale. We are expressing the uh, dynamic range uh, uh, in the scale of decibel. And I would say that uh, a typical uh, CMOS or CCD sensor has approximately a dynamic range of about 60 to 65 uh, decibel. And to further illustrate this problem I have chosen a more extreme uh, exposure situation showing a scene of a halogen lamp. Uh, and in the end what we want to see is the uh, filament inside the light bulb and the structure of this filament and at the same time being able to read the text on the labels to see the other parts surrounding the light bulb that is not so strongly illuminated. And on this picture uh, you see a series of images uh, at different exposure times and at 5 milliseconds it is possible to have a pretty good view of the uh, filament inside the uh, light bulb, uh, 20 milliseconds and 90 and 150 and on 400 milliseconds uh, it is uh, possible to uh, easily read the text on this label but at the same time uh, all the parts that is related to the light bulb itself is uh, strongly saturated so we can understand from this picture that it is very difficult to find one exposure time that can cover all this dynamic range from the darkest part uh, to the most light part. And as I said before, a detector, a CMOS detector or a CCD detector has a typical uh, dynamic range according to what they claim in their data sheets to be around 60 to 65 decibel. So the question is like how to capture and, and visualize uh, a whole range uh, of, of uh, light intensities in one single picture. On this uh, presentation slide I have expanded the experiment that I showed you on the previous slide. Uh, I have now made 23 different exposures ranging from 0 0.1 to 400 milliseconds and I have in this series of images having different exposure times um, analyzed two pixels I have chosen one pixel in a, a very light region the blue pixel blue marked pixel here and I have chosen another pixel in the very dark areas the red pixel here and then you see a diagram here on the right part where you have on the horizontal axis the exposure time and on the vertical axle the pixel value and the red slope here corresponds to the dark pixel and uh, the blue slope corresponds to 
the uh, the uh, high intensity uh, light pixel and of course you understand that when you increase the exposure time then the uh, light pixel will get saturated uh, very quickly uh, so uh, one can say that in the unsaturated region this is the unsaturated region and this is an unsaturated region the slope here uh, will correspond to the light intensity of those pixels so what I did is that I uh, made a, a simple algorithm uh, starting from the longest exposure and just for every one of the pixels in the image uh, trying to seek from the highest exposure uh, iterating down until I get to the first exposure that where this pixel uh, has a, a pixel value that is below the saturation level and I'm using that value then to compute uh, the slope so that is a way of generating this high dynamic range image. So you see that uh, by combining uh, a series of images, a whole range of, of images having different exposure times, it is possible to combine for each one of the pixels <coughs> such that we can have a, um, a, a good representation of the image data ranging from the very dark parts to the very light parts. Um, but then we run into the next problem, how to visualize this for a, a human, if you want to make a, a visual uh, representation of this high dynamic range image on the display system. And I would say that a typical data width for the, uh, uh, the, the pixel data is in the range of, of 8 pixels. And if we have a, an 8-bit linear grayscale, we can represent the highest dynamic range of 48 decibel. The corresponding for 12 bits will be 72 decibel and for 16 bits will be 84 decibel. But I mean 8 bits is uh, the most common uh, data representation for uh, any kind of display system. So we, are, uh, we have a limitation of, of 48 decibel. So we need to do something in order to represent this higher dy dynamic range on a display system that has a, a lower dynamic range. And we, we need some kind of uh, compressing gray level transformation to represent uh, this higher dynamic range on, on this 8-bit grayscale. Um, so what I have shown you on this uh, uh, grayscale transformation that you apply pixel-wise on each one of the pixels, uh, this should then be the input linear uh, high dynamic range grayscale and this will be the compressed uh, output grayscale. And we will uh, apply a higher uh, uh, contrast on the low intensity parts. And while the, uh, the uh, intensity increases, uh, we will reduce the contrast. And we can do this by applying the, the uh, uh, logarithm, computation of the 10th logarithm of the input grayscale. And then the computation of power uh, P. And if you apply the power P of equal to 1, uh, then it will correspond to the 10th logarithm. This is a typical method uh, that are, are used also in science in order to represent a high dynamic range of measurement values to compute the, the logarithmic scale. You know this. So we are, we are able to further uh, control uh, the amount of compression by setting this parameter p, uh, the power of p. And you see on the next slide we have been using the power p of 0 0.5 and now we have even higher contrast here in the low intensity regions. And we continue with the power of 0 0.3 uh, and we have even higher uh, contrast in the low parts and uh, as the intensity increases uh, the the uh, contrast becomes uh, a, a flat curve, one could say. And even for in the highest range of P equal to 0 0.1, this is a quite heavy compression of the dynamic range. Uh, 
we move on to uh, using the image information from our high dynamic range image that we created from the illumination situation with the halogen lamp and for using a compression with a parameter 0 0.1 and using for a compression a parameter 0 0.5 we get the corresponding compressed grayscale image and this is was the, the this this was the, the most intensive compression and you see it is possible to see the details here on the filament of the light bulb you can see the glass even uh, on the light bulb and all the details this is a screw as well as also you are able to read this label uh, on the lamp so this is a way of compression the the grayscale data such that it is now also possible for a human to to uh, to look at a, a video display and perceive this high dynamic range image i believe i have shown you with this simple experiment how it is possible to generate an image that can uh, handle a very high dynamic range of the light intensities as well as also providing a display system by means of, of grayscale compression such that a human can also perceive this uh, uh, high dynamic range image using a, a, a normal display system but then one should keep in mind that I actually were using uh, 23 exposures, uh, a sequence of 23 exposures. And the scene that I used in this experiment was a static one. And it means that it is not possible, it, it would not be realistic to have any kind of motion uh, in this scene. It would not be possible to use it for, for a, a front view of front view camera in a car, in a modern car. It wouldn't be possible to have it for surveillance of uh, any area, car park, where you have any kind of motion that you want to, to capture. So it would then be very much interesting to know what kind of detector technique is available on the market. Can we buy a, a CMOS or a CCD detector that directly can generate a high dynamic range image? So we will continue our discussion in this area. So how to implement high dynamic range imaging directly on an image detectors? Uh, the company uh, CMOSIS uh, is manufacturing and selling uh, image detectors and they support a video stream output from the detector that uh, has multi exposures so not just one exposure at a time but several exposure at a time having different range of exposures but that of course uh, will uh, will uh, require uh, post processing from uh, an image processing system uh, another company aptina uh, they support uh, mode for high dynamic range imaging using dual exposures and from these two exposure times they can combine uh, a high dynamic range image and at the same time they claim to have some kind of motion compensation how well this one work I'm not sure about I don't know but they claim to have a motion compensation in their data cheat uh, and CMOSIS they also have uh, support for dual exposures but they ex have a dual a different exposure on the odd field and the even field of the detector um, and combining uh, these two exposures uh, into a high dynamic range image and they can be exposed more or less at the same time but having different lengths which means that there there is no like um, motion blurring to be expected but of course then you would also at the same time reduce the spatial resolution of the detector using this technique one could also think about having a, a pixel detector, the sensitive photosensitive diode that could have a logarithmic response uh, to create a compression of the dynamic range directly at the uh, photosensitive area. 
And another technique could be to have a, an analog amplifier at the output just before the uh, A to D converter, an analog amplifier that could have a logarithmic response to increase the dynamic range of the detector. And the fourth method uh, could be possibly to have dual pixels, so not only one pixel, but uh, a arrangement of dual pixels where one of the pixels uh, has a photosensitive area that is lower than the other one. So you can create uh, a system having uh, two different sensitivities uh, for the exposure. And from these two different sensitivities, it could also be possible to generate a high dynamic range image that uh, would not be sensitive to motion blurring. Uh, the exposure would happen at the same time. But of course, this would also reduce the spatial resolution of the detector. Uh, um, common technique for all of these suppliers of uh, high dynamic range imaging detectors is to have a, a compression curve uh, where you can uh, have a, an A to D converter that has much higher uh, resolution, bit with resolution, than the final output. And then you can com implement a, a, a lookup table uh, for a, a piecewise linear response uh, that you can see here in the picture. Uh, so you define these uh, uh, interest points to create piecewise linearity in uh, a number of regions. This one is, for instance, it is supported by the Aptina detectors. And I think there is support for this also in the CMOS SIS detectors. Um, yeah, and if you have a lookup table, you can actually implement uh, any arbitrary uh, uh, grayscale uh, compression curve. I have also included <coughs> a number of scientific references where you can read more about high dynamic range imaging as well as also a number of references to uh, uh, type numbers, models of detectors supplied by different uh, companies, CMOSIS, Aptina, uh, Melexis. So feel free to read more about high dynamic range imaging. We have been discussing today about uh, high dynamic range imaging and I have showed you an example of this light bulb. Uh, and if you start to think about it, it actually means that the need for exposure control in the camera it disappears. I mean if the detector itself has the capability of uh, capturing information independently of uh, the, the light intensity the need for exposure control kind of disappears. Um, there is a, a, as I have viewed myself on the market, it appears to be an emerging trend and there is a growing need and activity on the detector market and on the camera market for this high dynamic range imaging. And I would say that the driving applications are mainly in the in the uh, camera surveillance uh, due to security reasons of course uh, surveillance of, of uh, public areas uh, public security as well as also the automotive industry and both these industries they these are, are high volume markets so that's why the the uh, the uh, image detector companies they see high uh, growth in this area and they show a great interest for high dynamic range imaging and I think the the uh, challenge in future is to be able to create and market a detector that is able to to give a high dynamic range image uh, not based on multi exposure but to make it in one single exposure to not uh, introduce any motion blurring to uh, moving objects into the image and at the same time preserve a high sensitivity uh, this is very much needed in the in the surveillance uh, business uh, 
as well as also providing a high spatial resolution in terms of a number of, of pixels and, and so on. And I think this is a very interesting uh, technology develop, development. And of course, I know I'm a little bit nerdy, but I, I also hope that you like this as much as I do. So please go on and study high dynamic range imaging.